Hey, what's happening guys? Thanks for joining me again today. Uh, like I promised, we're going to talk about winding an auto transformer. Or if you are in the amateur radio hobby, you might call this an un -un, an unbalanced to unbalanced converter. But uh, regardless of what you call it, this is a 9 to 1 impedance match and what this is going to do is it is going to match a 450 ohm line whether it's an antenna or whatever you're using it for to a 50 ohm load which in this case would you know be like a radio or something like that so we have our toroid and it is going to get nine windings of three separate wires and just to make it easy we'll label them a1 b1 and c1 where the windings begin a2 b2 and c2 where they end and then over here we have our antenna we have our radio and we have our ground so the antenna in this case would be a high impedance 450 ohm long wire antenna and our radio would be the low impedance 50 ohm load and what we want to do is we want to match them with that 9 to 1 difference in impedance there's going to be a crap ton of power losses which if you know anything about electricity or electronics when power is lost it is 99% of the time transferred into heat the other 1% is transferred into light or other minor radiation aspects but 99% it is transferred to heat heat of course being the arch enemy of anything electronic so we want to avoid that so here's how this goes we take A1 and we connect it to our antenna. We take B1 and we connect it to A2. And we take C1 and we connect it to our radio tuner. And we take C2 and we connect it to ground and that's it that's all there is to it now there's just a little bit more to it we are also going to connect B2 to our tuner and since this is probably generally fed with coax let me see if I can make this look like coax does that look like coax? I don't know if it does. But anyway, you're definitely one going to take the, the shield braid from the coax and also connect it to ground. But that is how we're going to wind our 9 to 1 auto transformer. Now, we're going to use toroid like we talked about yesterday. And we need to use three separate pieces of wire. And we're, I'm, I'm going to do them different colors just to make it easy on myself. But how do you figure out how much wire you need? Well, I'll show you a little trick. If you take your wire and feed it through your toroid, pull it taut. As tight as you're going to wind your thing, that's how tight you want to pull it. And then you're going to want to bring it up like this so that you have a turn and a half. Once you have that turn and a half, just take a marker and draw right across the center of it. All right. Pretty simple so far, right? Now we unwind it. And there are our two marks. We can measure between our two marks. 
and that's about five centimeters so five times nine is 45 so 45 centimeters let's add another 10 so that we have some room to work on the outside and we'll call that 55 centimeters so we're going to need three wires each cut at about 55 centimeters so I'm going to do that now and we'll be right back okay I've got my three separate wires I've used green white and yellow and these are um, solid core wire you don't want to use stranded you can it doesn't really make a difference in the electrical characteristics it just makes it harder to wind if you use stranded because they're so springy so 22 gauge solid core wire and I've cut about 55 centimeters worth and then we're going to start and wind our nine turns and you want to be very careful how you do this because we want the wires to remain in the same position this green white yellow we don't want them switching around in any way so what I like to do is just kind of poke them through like this and then once they're through give them a nice pull make sure that everything is lined up neatly and then we can go on to the next row and I'm not gonna make you watch me wind this nine times but I'll be back when it's done okay so everything's wound didn't really take too long a couple minutes now it should go without saying and whenever it should go without saying you should probably really say it you need to size your wires for the amount of power you intend to use so 22 gauge wires I'm just putting some hot glue on here to hold everything in place 22 gauge wires not gonna be good for a hundred watts of output probably good for about 20 to 30 watts of output power which is all I intend to use this with so my size should be fine all right so we're all nice and wound just gonna cut this off here and there's our nine to one now we just have a few connections to make so I'm gonna warm up the soldering iron and we'll get that ready to go all right while you weren't looking I got a few things ready I just got a little ring terminal on here where it's going to the ground these are all tinned and then I have my enclosure ready we got an SO239 for the input we've got a uh, binding post for our ground and another binding post for our antenna so where shall we start well let's start by putting together a B1 and A2 So they've already been tinned. And all I really need to do is heat them up and put them together. Okie dokie. That's taken care of. All right, next we need our connection to our feed line which is C1 and B2 okay 
we're just about ready to finish wiring everything up our feed line coming out of the SO239 connector goes to our C1 B2 junction which is right here everything's been tinned so a little melty melty and everybody's friends next our antenna line goes up to our antenna connector our antenna line is of course a1 a little long let me trim that And once again, everything's been tinned. And finally, we just need to attach our ground lead over here. And that will attach with the nut. like so let me get that on there be right back okay so all of our connections are made I don't know why my lights not coming on there but there you can see we have all of our connections made and I know you're probably saying well you didn't you didn't uh, insulate any of your connections yeah I know this is all gonna get potted here real quick And here we goes. Mmm. Hot glue. Everybody's favorite. A little bit of that. Oh, I think I used all my all my heat up. Have to let it sit for a minute. I hit all those connections with the hot glue. This does not have to be waterproof because it's not going to be for a permanent installation. This is just a temporary kind of thing. All right, well, you don't have to watch me hot glue the rest of that together. Anyway, there's our box. Our input comes in here, ground wire goes out there, antenna wire goes out there, 9 to 1 auto transformer allows you to use a high impedance antenna with a low impedance radio. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. But before I go. I want to apologize last week or so my videos have probably seemed a little disjointed maybe not as well prepared as usual apologize for that you guys have been following the channel for a while you know that I have some health issues also have a demanding job in addition to this and my uh, my elderly father is having some serious health issues right now so kind of frazzled at the moment but I'm here for you guys as always, love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.